Welcome to Accounting with Madam Ombi. Today we are going to look at marginal and absorption costing. These are techniques that are used in both cost accounting and management accounting for valuation of inventory and also for prepare, preparing an income statement under the two options. So to begin with, we can look at what is marginal costing. Marginal costing, it is also called variable costing. It is a product costing technique that only considers variable manufacturing costs. So in the value of inventory. So what you're saying, marginal costing is equivalent to variable costing. What is unique about this method of costing is that it only considers the variable cost while computing the value of inventory. That is, it totally ignores fixed manufacturing costs and treats those fixed manufacturing costs as period costs. When something is treated as a period cost, it is simply said to be incurred due to passage of time rather than being considered to be a product cost here, where a product cost is a cost that is incurred either in production or in acquiring a good for resale. So marginal costing or variable costing, we have said that it only considers the variable manufacturing cost in the unit cost of inventory. Now, what, this is what differentiates marginal cost from uh, absorption costing. Absorption costing is also called full costing. It considers both the variable and the fixed manufacturing cost in the value of inventory. So in a full costing, both variable and fixed production costs are all included when valuing inventory. So simply, in absorption costing, fixed manufacturing costs are also treated as product costs as opposed to what we have seen in marginal costing. This is a key difference between two methods. It's just simply on how they treat fixed manufacturing overheads as we are going to see. Now, to differentiate uh, marginal costing and absorption costing, these are the key major differences. Number one, while marginal costing assumes that only variable manufacturing costs are product costs, Full costing or absorption costing takes into consideration both variable and fixed manufacturing costs as product costs. That is the first difference. And this is exactly what we have seen in the definition. Again, while marginal costing treats fixed production costs as period costs, that is, they are expensed in total in the period incurred and they are assumed to be incurred just because of passage of time, in uh, absorption costing, fixed production, fixed production costs are treated as product costs. That is, they are added to the cost of the product. They are added to the cost of the product. So that is the, the second difference. The third difference is that marginal costing barely classifies cost into two. It only classifies cost as either fixed or variable. So throughout our encounter today with marginal costing, we are only going to be classifying cost into two categories, either as fixed or variable. So this basis or this method focuses as cost on that classification based on their cost behavior. Now, absorption costing, it is goes further to analyze cost into their usage in terms of whether they are administration costs, selling costs, distribution costs, etc. So in absorption costing, it aligns with the normal expenditures or how we classify expenses, rather into those categories in which we used to classify expenses as selling expenses, distribution expenses, administration expenses, and so on. Then finally, 
Marginal costing focuses on the cost concept of contribution margin. We are going to find that we are going to first of all look for the contribution margin, while absorption costing focuses on overall profitability. Now, these are the key differences between marginal costing, but the major difference is on the first point here on how they treat fixed manufacturing costs. So, uh, we have to prepare an income statement under marginal costing and also prepare an income statement under absorption costing. So this is the income statement on marginal costing. When you are going to be using marginal costing, definitely we are going to start with the sales. How much is the value of the sales? Then we are going to consider the cost of those sales. We are going to start with the opening stock. This time the opening stock is valued at the variable cost of production. As we have said, it only considers variable production cost. That is marginal costing. Then the cost of production is going to be added, which is now all the variable costs like direct material, direct labor, the variable production overhead, etc. like that. Then closing stock is also going to be valued at the variable cost. And once we get the cost of sales, we subtract it from the sales figure we are going to get what we call gross contribution. This is what I've said that it focuses on contribution margin rather than focusing on profit. Once you get the gross contribution, you're going to less other variable non production costs and what you're going to get is net contribution. And so far you can see that marginal cost classifies cost only into two categories, either as variable cost or fixed cost. Then you are going to less all the fixed cost as we have said again, that it treats fixed costs as period cost. They are expensed in total at the end of the period. That is, they are treated as period cost instead of being treated as product cost. So, and then whatever we get is the net profit using marginal costing. All right. Then in absorption costing, in absorption costing, again, you are going to start with the sales. How much is the sales uh, value? Then we are going to have the cost of sales, which is made up of opening stock. This time the opening stock is valued at full cost. Full cost is both variable cost and fixed cost of manufacturing. And this is where we have said the difference is. Here we are going out to value at full cost in absorption costing. When we come to the production cost, you have direct material that is variable, direct labor that is variable, variable production overhead is variable, and you are going also to have fixed production overhead. So we have said, and I repeat, that this one is going to consider even the fixed production overhead as value of the product. So that was missing from marginal costing. This fixed production was missing from the marginal costing technique. Then closing stock is also now going to be valued at full cost, which is both variable and fixed. And now when we less sales minus the cost of sales here, the answer we get now is a gross profit. This again is what we have said that this method focuses on profitability rather than focusing on contribution margin. So whatever the answer we get is called gross profit. And then we are going to list the non-production expenses, both variable and fixed. Here is where we are saying that those overheads will be classified into administrative, selling, distribution expenses. All of them we are going to list. Then we are going to add, make an adjustment for either over or under absorption of overhead. We are going to see what this is in the... Yeah, at, uh, later time, but in the course of this class. So we are going to see what is over or under absorption of overhead. And finally, that is how you get the net profit. But this time, this is under absorption costing. Now, you can see the differences in the two method. Majorly, the differences lie in how you value production, how you value opening and closing stock, and how you treat the overheads here. That is where mostly most of the differences come in. 
So to be able to understand this concept better, we can look at a question. We can look at a question. It says that the standard cost of producing one unit of a product M is given below. The direct labor is shillings 15, direct material is shillings 24, variable production overhead shilling 6, fixed production overhead is estimated at shillings 30,000 for a budget of 2,000 units per month. And the following information is also provided for the month of October 2022 where 2,000 units of the product were produced and 15,000, I mean sorry, 1,500 units were sold. The actual fixed production overhead incurred is shillings 25,000. Annual non-production cost also consists of fixed selling cost of 36,000, variable selling cost of 15% of the sales in shillings. Required a profit and loss statement at the both variable costing and full costing, and then you reconcile the profits from the two methods. So this is what we are going to do. I hope now you have captured the question so that you can be able to follow on uh, the answer. So to answer our question, our first, our first and the most important part is going to be to determine how we are going to value under the two methods. How are we going to value production under marginal costing and full costing? So we are going to have here marginal costing. And then I can have here absorption costing. And I want us to come back here. And I want us to come back here in our question and see. We have direct material, direct labor. Direct labor, uh, sorry, sorry for that. Direct labor is shillings 15 per unit. All direct costs are variable cost. Therefore, direct labor is a variable cost. Then you have direct material of shillings 24 per unit. Again, it is a direct cost, meaning it is a variable cost. Then you have variable production overhead of shilling six. So all these first three items are variable cost. So that means that we are going to consider them here. So we are going to consider the direct material, I mean the direct labor, direct material, and the variable production overheads. Allow me to use the short forms for them. We are saying we are going to consider them. They are going to be considered under marginal costing because it only considers variable costs, but they are also going to be considered under absorption costing because it considers both variable and fixed. So you have 15 here, which is also going to be considered here when you are valuing inventory. Direct material of 24 is going to be considered in marginal, also considered in absorption. A variable production overhead is going to be considered in both categories. But now, the third cost, which is the fixed production overhead. Fixed production overhead. We have been told that it is estimated at shillings 30,000 for 2,000 units. So we are being told it is estimated at shillings 30,000 for a number of 2,000 units. This means that per unit, it is estimated as shillings 15. And this is what you are calling the fixed overhead absorption rate. Fixed overhead absorption rate. How the overhead is going to be absorbed, that is a fixed overhead. And again, I can take you back there, and you can be able to see that here, that we have been told that the fixed production overhead is estimated at 30,000 for a budget of 2,000 units per month. So. 30,000 is for 2,000 units. Therefore, how much is it per unit is what you are going to use to get what you are saying. Is a, is a fixed overhead absorption rate. So our fixed overhead absorption rate is 15. But now in marginal costing, it does not consider fixed overhead. 
I mean of fixed production overhead, but in absorption costing it shall be considered. That is the difference between marginal costing and absorption costing. So per unit, in marginal costing, the total is going to be 45. And for absorption costing, the total is going to be 60. So that is how we have uh, the total for marginal costing and the total for uh, absorption costing per unit of product. This is cost per unit. Cost per unit. Here, this is the cost per unit. Under both marginal and absorption costing. Now, this is not the end. This is a preliminary working. What we need to do now is to prepare the, in, the income statement or the profit and loss statement under both methods, that is under marginal costing and under absorption costing. We are going to divide this board into half so that we have both of them here. We can have marginal costing here. We are saying this is an income statement under the two method, income statement, that is under marginal costing, then you can have the income statement under absorption costing. So an income statement is prepared to show the profit or the loss. So definitely, we are going to start with a column for, uh, we are going to have a column for the sales. I mean, the first item is going to be the sales. So you can have uh, two columns there. So from our question, from our question, we can see how many units were sold. It is said that, uh, the following information is provided for the month of October 2022. 2,000 units of the product were produced and 1,500 units were sold. So the sales is 1,500 units. And before I leave this page, you would also note that the selling price per unit, you have been told the standard selling price per unit is shillings 205. So we have to remember the selling price is shillings 205. So coming back now here, we are going to get the sales. We can stay there, the sales. We have said it's 1,500 units multiplied by a selling price of 205. Therefore, the amount of money that we get is shillings 307,000. 307,500, like that. And the sales even in absorption costing is going to be the same. The sales is the same. It is also going to be 307,500. So I'm going to do both of them together so that you can see the difference and where the differences come in. So the next item is to less the cost of sales. So I'll come here, we less the cost of sales. So the cost of sales here is made up of opening stock. In our question, there was no opening stock. So we are going to put there is nothing in opening stock. Then we add production cost. Production cost. Production cost is what we had there as direct material, direct labor, direct uh, or variable production overheads, fixed production overheads. Now, like for instance, we know the production in units is 2,000. So the production cost here we are saying is of 2,000 units that were produced. We would simply take each one of them at a time and say here we put direct material. So we are going to say direct material was 24 shillings per unit. We multiply by 2,000 units. Uh, what I'm saying is that we can put here direct material. We are saying it is 24 shillings per unit multiplied by 2,000 units, we get the answer. We also find direct labor. Direct labor was 15 shillings. We multiply by the number of units, we get the answer. There was variable overheads. 
of shilling six times two thousand, you get the answer. Because we are not going to include here fixed cost. Alternatively, you would take the total of all these, which we found to be forty-five. We simply multiply by two thousand. It, it would give us the same answer, so that they will get the production cost in total. Now, because of my space here, I would prefer that we use the total production cost, which we are saying is the total of 24 plus 15 plus 6, which you got as 45, and a marginal costing, then you multiply by the number of units that were produced, which is 2,000, we simply get 90,000. So I am going to erase here. I was only using this to explain that point. So our production cost is going to be the number of units that we have produced is 2,000 and the production cost here we are only considering the variable production cost. We do not consider fixed. So our production cost is going to be 90,000. Then you are going to less closing stock. Closing stock. Our closing stock is the number of units that have not been sold at the end of the year. Look at this. We have production as 2,000, but the sales is 1,500 units. So the number of units we produced was 2,000, the number of units we sold was 1,500. What does that mean? That means that there is closing stock of 500 units that have not been sold. So simply our closing stock is 500 units, which is the difference between our production of 2,000 units and our sales of 1,500 units. And we are saying it is valued at variable cost. The variable cost is 45. So you're going to get uh, 22,500. And we are listing. Then the whole of this calculation here is what you're calling the cost of sales. And the answer we get there is 67,500 which again we are going to subtract from the sales figure. Now this, we minus, we minus, we are minusing sales minus the cost of sales. The answer we get is called gross contribution, gross contribution. So we have said this method focuses on contribution margin. So we are going to get the gross contribution as 240,000. This method also now focuses on variable cost first, then fixed cost later. Fixed cost will be expensed in total as a period cost. So again, let's look for any other variable cost. In our question, we were told there is variable selling cost. The variable selling cost we had been told is 15% of the sales value in shillings. The sales value is 307,500. And you have been told in our question that there is a variable selling cost. This is the cost that is incurred in selling. The cost we are talking here is incurred in production. Now this is cost incurred in selling. So 15% of 307,500 is going to give us 46,125. And the answer we get after subtracting this is called the net contribution. Net contribution. It's called the net contribution, which is going to be 193,875. So at this point now, in this method, that is when now we less fixed cost. So fixed cost, this is the time they find their way in this marginal costing. And it is all the fixed cost. Whether the fixed cost were incurred in production, whether the fixed cost were incurred in selling, whether the fixed cost were incurred in any other. Hmm? That is the point where we less all the fixed cost. So fixed costs are treated as period cost. This is what we mean. Period cost. They are expensed in total at the end of the period. So we have fixed production. Fixed production. And also we have fixed selling, fixed selling, the actual, the actual that was incurred in the period. So fixed production that was incurred is 25,000, while the fixed selling 
is 36,000. Total giving us 61,000. And when you less, you get the answer, which is the net profit. Net profit. So we are saying in this method, the fixed production costs are expensed in total. And we can look for these figures from our question. You can find that. We had been told here that uh, the actual fixed production overhead in card is shillings 25,000. This is the one we are saying there that is expensed in total, fixed production. Other than production cost consists of fixed selling cost of shillings 36,000. That again has been expensed in total. And variable selling cost of 15% of sales in shillings. This is the one we have expensed as variable cost or variable selling cost. Here, uh, all of them in that form, form, we have the variable selling cost, which is 15%, and we have the fixed production and the fixed selling here in total. So that is marginal costing for us. So we can come now here to absorption costing, and then we are going to compare. So in absorption costing, we are also going to less the cost of sales. So you are going to less cost of sales. We're going to less the cost of sales. But now we have uh, opening stock. Opening stock. And we said in our question there was no opening stock. We did not have stock at the beginning of the year. The next item we are going to have is production cost. So we're going to have production cost. And as I've said, we do not multiply, we don't need to multiply direct material and get the total direct labor and get the total variable cost and get the total fixed production cost and get the total. We can simply use the total. So what I'm saying, other than saying that the production was 2,000 units, we multiply with direct material. Direct material was 24. Then we come to direct labor. which was 15, then you come to variable overhead, which was uh, six, then we come to fixed overhead, mm -hmm. which was 15. Instead of doing this, that is per unit, per unit, uh, uh, not per unit, but I mean per category of, uh, of cost, we can simply use the total which is the total variable cost in this, I mean total fixed cost or the full cost. So I'm going to clear this. And then we are going to just simply take on the production cost. So our production cost is going to be 2,000 units were produced at a cost of shilling 60. That is the cost of a, uh, Full cost, both variable and fixed. So this time here now we are going to find the production cost is going to be 120,000. Then we are going to less closing stock. Closing stock. Closing stock. It is now valued at full cost. Again, closing stock is the same. We say that number of units produced was 2,000. Number of units sold was 1,500 meaning there is closing stock of 500 units. Valued at full cost, we said full cost is 60. Full cost is 60. I hope you can remember that. This is what I'm talking about here. Absorption costing, full cost is 60, while in marginal costing we were using 45. This is what I'm talking about. So here now valued at 60, we are going to get 30,000 which you are going to subtract from the production cost, and then you are going to get uh, this to be 90,000, which again, we are going to less from the sales figure. So from the sales, we are going to less the cost of sales, and the answer we get, which is 217,500, we are calling this gross profit. And this is the first difference, now you can see. 
While in marginal costing, this is called gross contribution. In uh, absorption costing, it is called gross profit. Then, it is good to note that we have already included fixed production costs here. So the next thing is just simply less expenses. Less expenses. And this is why we said these expenses would be any administration, selling, distribution. These are the expenses we are talking about. And from our question, the selling, the expenses that we have are only selling expenses. We did not have any administration expense. But all other expenses here come here. Uh, this categorization is different from here in marginal costing where we are simply classifying costs as either variable or fixed. Now, here are the expenses that we have in our question is two of them. We have variable selling cost, variable selling and we have fixed selling fixed selling so uh, we have variable selling variable selling was 46 125 it is the same from the previous method fixed selling cost was 36,000 so everything is the same it's just how uh, they are categorized. So our total cost is going to be 82, 125, which we subtract and get the profit as 135, 375. Now this profit, we need to check for something that we called over and under absorption of overheads. By deciding to put a little bit of fixed costs in every produced unit, like you can see here, well, let's say here, for every product we have included 15 shillings of fixed production overhead. So for every unit there is 15 shillings, which is fixed production overhead. And our understanding of a fixed cost, what is a fixed cost? It remains constant within a relevant range of activities. So this cost is basically not increasing or decreasing whether you produce more or produce less, but rather but even so, we have included a part of that cost, specifically 15 shillings has been included in every unit. So what we can say is that, let's ask ourselves, how much of this cost was absorbed? How much was absorbed? Absorbed. So we have produced 2,000 units. These are the units we have produced. And for every of these units, we have, we have, uh, we have placed 15 shillings of fixed overhead. Rather, 15 shillings is the fixed overhead absorption rate. Per unit, we are absorbing a fixed cost of 15 shillings. So the total that we have absorbed is 30,000. That is the absorbed overhead. So the absorbed overhead is 30,000. But if you compare with the actual production overhead, actual production overhead, we see that the actual is 25,000 according to our question. That according to our question, the actual production overhead is 25,000. So we find that by using absorption costing, we have already said that the fixed cost or the fixed manufacturing cost is that thousand. It is how much we have absorbed into production. But at the end of the day, or at the end of the month, the actual production overhead was 25. Therefore, here there is a case of overabsorption. We have absorbed more than the actual. So we are saying there is a case of overabsorption. So here we can say that the absorbed overhead, the absorbed overhead is a 15 shillings multiplied by 2,000 units because the number of units produced were 2,000 and we are adding a 15 shillings of fixed cost to each one of them. So the absorbed overhead is 30,000 but the actual, the actual overhead is 25,000. We have been told that the actual overhead is 25,000. 
Therefore, here there is a case of over-absorption. So, there is over-absorption. Over-absorption. The over-absorption is of 5,000. And this is the one we are going to add to our profit. The reason we are adding to our profit is because it is simply means that this production is overstated. This production cost is overstated by shillings 5,000. If production cost was overstated, it means our profit was reduced. So we are increasing the profit by that amount that it was. Um, by overstating the production cost, of course, you are reducing the profit. So we are simply saying this profit has been reduced by 5,000 because the production cost was overstated by an equivalent amount. So we are adding the overabsorbed amount. So we are going to have 140, 375. This is the net profit according to um, absorption costing. So the profit as per marginal costing is 132. 800, 875 where the profit and uh, absorption costing is 140, 375. So we can evaluate these two methods and see what is the difference. You can find that the sales is the same under the two methods. When you come to the less the cost of sales in the format it is the same. The only difference is that while here in marginal costing we value at 45 shillings, which is a variable cost only. In uh, absorption costing we are going to value at shilling 60, which is variable cost plus fixed production overhead. So simply in absorption costing they have added to every product 15 shillings of the fixed cost. Okay. What we get here is called a gross contribution because simply a contribution is the difference between selling price and variable cost. That is how you get a contribution. And because so far we have not subtracted any fixed cost, that is why the answer there is called a gross contribution. The answer here is called a gross profit. This is because you have already left some component of fixed cost. Now the answer can quantify to be a gross profit. In this method, it first of all categorizes all the variable costs, then comes to the fixed cost. So the variable cost selling is also subtracted first. You get the net contribution. Finally, you less the fixed cost in that order. Variable first, variable production first, variable selling, then fixed cost, all of them, whether fixed production or fixed selling, all of them. Here, there is no categorization into variable and fixed. They are combined in production, they are also combined in administration and selling. So you less variable selling and fixed selling cost. And here now there will be an issue of over and under absorption of overhead. As we have seen these cases, a case of overabsorption. We can move on and reconcile the profits under the two methods. So the profit as per Marginal costing and then we are seeing that the profit as per marginal costing was 132, 875. Then we have the profit as per absorption costing. absorption costing which is 140 375 so we want to reconcile we want to reconcile reconciliation we can we want to reconcile the profits so what is uh, causing all these differences in these two profits is simply one thing what is causing the difference in the two profits is the fixed is how they have treated the fixed production cost. One added to the value of inventory, the other one did not. Therefore, we are going to say here you add or you less the fixed production cost, fixed production overhead 
tied up tied up in inventory in net inventory so for the closing stock it contains a component of fixed cost so that is why there is a difference between the profits so we are going to say 15 shillings is tied up in the net inventory then we less closing stock minus opening stock in units so in our case it is 15 shillings there was closing stock of 500 units but there was no opening stock remember there was no opening stock but there was closing stock of shilling i mean of units 500 so the fixed cost that is tied up in the inventory is shilling 7500 which is the difference now and in this case we have said here you add or you less in our case 140 is more than 132 therefore you are going to add so that is how you reconcile the profits under the two methods or you explain why the two methods are resulting in different profits and that is the marking the end of our question so we can go back now to our explanation here where this is explaining what I've talked about, what is over and under absorption of overheads. An overhead is said to be overabsorbed when the applied overhead is more than the actual, like we have seen in our question. We absorbed 30,000, but the actual was 25,000, leading to an overabsorption of 5,000. Or an overhead can be underabsorbed in case. The absorbed overhead is less than the actual overhead in CAD. So this simply is what we have done as part of the question, which is over and under absorption of overhead. Then now let's come and think about which method is preferred. There is a hot debate among scholars on whether marginal costing is preferred to absorption costing. So in favor of marginal costing, the reason why marginal costing is preferred for decision making, number one, is that it represents expenses according to cost behavior. That is, it represents expenses according to what their behavior, either is variable or fixed. That is a plus for it. Number two, it is said to approximate the actual cash flow position of the organization. Number three, it eliminates the issue of over and under absorption of overheads. Like you have seen in marginal costing, there are no issues of over and under absorption of overheads. Number four, it writes off fixed cost in total as expenses as period cost. Ordinarily, we know that fixed cost like rent, for example, you know, it is not as a result of production. It is simply because there was a tight passage of time and sometimes fixed costs have to be incurred whether you produce or not. So this method of marginal costing writes off fixed cost as period cost. It does not include them in the value of inventory. That would make it have a plus in terms of being preferred for decision making. And finally, it does not lead to absorption of overheads, which is a subjective exercise. We don't have to apportion overheads like we have been doing here now, dividing how much is the overhead, how much is the budget, trying to get the overhead absorption rate. We do not need to do that when you use marginal costing. But on the flip side, there are also reasons why uh, absorption costing may be preferred. Number one, it is that it allocates a section of the fixed cost or the fixed overhead to the units sold and therefore the closing stock of goods contains both variable component and fixed component. Again, it seems to comply with the generally acceptable accounting principles, whereby it recognizes all the cost of production. By recognizing both variable and fixed, it appears to be in agreement with the gaps or the generally acceptable accounting principles, which uh, require recognition of all the cost. Then, by recognizing fixed cost in production, this increases the value of inventory. And when the value of inventory is increased, it is able to influence the pricing strategy. 
So the cost of the production is seen to be high. Of course, definitely that will make the product pricing to also be high because by considering all the costs, both fixed and variable, the cost, cost ends up being higher than what it would be if you only considered marginal costing, uh, variable cost only. Therefore, the pricing strategy now, the prices can be higher. And finally, uh, absorption costing does not downplay the importance of fixed cost. So in marginal costing, we seem to likely like downplay how important fixed costs are, but in absorption costing, it takes fixed costs seriously and uh, does not downplay their importance in production. So these are just arguments in favor of either of the two methods. And uh, that marks the end of my presentation on marginal and absorption costing. If you found this to be helpful, kindly like, share and subscribe. Thank you.